the wait is almost over because in just a few hours, England officially kick off a game-changing home tournament. That's right, we'll be looking ahead to today's game against Austria. We'll be talking to Lioness's legend, Rachel Ralph Finnis, and also Molly and Rosie Kamit. Hello guys, I am Joella Noble and welcome back to the England Team Hotel in London. Alongside me today is the one and only Josh Denzel. You're back. That's right, I'm back and I'm absolutely buzzing and guys, you should be buzzing too. We need you to get your messages of support in today, especially it means a lot with the game tonight. You can do that for YouTube comments or on Twitter using the hashtag Lionesses Live. That's right, this moment means so much That's to it. us to the nation, to the lionesses as well. So let's take a quick look at exactly what they have to say. It means everything to be able to play in a home tournament this summer. It's just a really exciting time for women's football in this country. You know, I'm delighted to be part of this talented squad. Um, obviously, a home Euros, um, all our group games uh, are sold out. So, um, yeah, I think everyone in this group is really excited and, and hopefully we can make the nation really proud. I'm really excited, um, looking forward to a huge summer. So excited for the tournament. Um, I think it's such a great opportunity to be presented with. Playing at a home tournament this summer um, is going to be pretty special. Um, I can't wait to see my family in the stands, see the fans, um, being able to interact with them and obviously playing football that everybody wants to see. Um, yeah, massively excited to get going. Oh my gosh, how great is it to hear what it means to them, you know? It's, it's incredible. You know, we had, kind of had a home tournament with the men's team. It wasn't quite a home tournament, but this, yeah. But it is it's completely a home tournament and you can see that the buzz, look at the, the bunting's out. I know! It's massive. It's, it's proper massive stuff, trailer. it's proper stuff. You know, home tournament, kick off at Old Trafford tonight. It's a big deal. And you know what, we've been asking you to send in your messages of support. Keep doing that. Hashtag Lioness is live. But before all of that, let's have a look at some of them, right? Yeah, let's have Should a look, look at some of them. Should we get into it? Here we go. This, I mean, there's, there's some... Very, very, very special messages. And yes, some very we've cool got pictures some pictures as well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh my right. gosh. Look at this. <laughs> See, look at this. This is, so, is St. George. St. George came down himself, slayed the dragon, <laughs> and then just said, here we go. Thanks very much. Yes. Keep, keep these flags. This is Brian Prestige. I mean, there's no natural light in that house at this point. You no, know? the St. George's blackout, you know, straight from, I don't know, whatever your name brand supermarket. Yeah and just kick the house in. A hundred percent. And Brian Prestige has said, we're ready for the Lionesses to kick off. Oof. Let's go. Not in yeah. the way I said it. Yeah, kick I off said it like a little they bit aggressive, like but no, I feel, I feel like it's, it's a happy kick off, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kick off the game. Kick off. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's still sad. I won't whistle. <laughs> What's the next one we got? <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I'm wow. absolutely in Diana love with Al this. Shamari. This is an incredible bespoke shirt that they've created. I mean, the comment is, come on, Lionesses, couldn't help myself, but this kit is so damn gorgeous and deserved a little sight and sight. That's a bit more than a sight and sight. This ain't not just sight and sight. It's not a little sight. You're being humble there, Diana, mm -hmm. right? I'm just going to put it out there. I love the shirt. And if you have, like, any extras or anything, then... Um, wow. Are you really going there? Hook a sister up, you know? It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, and I do what You're just myself. jealous you didn't say it first. <sighs> yeah, 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 I could tell. You got me. I could tell. Let's look at one more. <laughs> Oh, I love a bun in. Ah, you see, there we go. It's like a street party. Yeah. It's like, I love that, but inside of the house. Exactly. You know, when, you, when you're watching the TV, you could be, listen, you could wake up in the morning of the game, you wake up this morning, the news could be on, yeah. right? But you're still looking at the St. George's Cross, you're still looking at the flags, mm -hmm. and you're thinking, I, I, I don't care about anything else but this game tonight. Exactly, and that's what we like. That one's from Louise Morgan, mm -hmm. and they've said, We are ready, England Lionesses. See you later. Come on, England. That one's less aggressive, right? That, 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 was, like that, was, that was a little bit more that was a little bit more chilled. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Josh. It's I appreciate right. you. <laughs> now, let's get on to the big game. And who better to join us today than a lioness legend? Honestly, a lioness is legend. Elite level of experience, played in major tournament, goalkeeping 
superstar, Rachel Brown Fitness. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us on Lioness's Live Connected by EE. How are you feeling ahead of tonight's game? Oh, mixture of nerves, excitement. I just, I want to be there at Old Trafford in my seat, massive full stadium. I'm watching the girls warm up, ready, feeling those tingly nerves. But more than anything, I'm so excited that the tournament's finally starting. And with the girls in such good form, I'm just trying to keep it cool. <laughs> I know, I could feel it. We're all feeling the same, like super nervous, but they're so good. The excitement's there now. <laughs> So it seems like a simple question, but how do you expect England to set up for this game? Like they have been doing, using their best weapons, Lauren Hemp um, particularly. That front three have been unbelievable and how they've linked up through Kira Walsh and Leah Williamson through the midfield. Georgia Stanway looks like she's in a form of her life. And they've been defensively solid as well. So on the ball, possession-based... Uh, but being confident because they've got really good ball players in defence to be able to play the ball, thread it through the thirds or go direct. Yeah, and you know, we've been building up to this tournament for so long. How do you think the players are feeling? Are they like feeling the pressure? Are they excited? Are they nervous or like everything in one? I would imagine more excited. The, all the warm-up games are great and have been fantastic for building confidence and real momentum going into the tournament, but it's all been pending this game tonight. Yeah. And knowing for months that it's been sold out, knowing you know what it means for England football, there's a really good blend of young players with their first Euros, as well as players who've been involved in European Championships, World yeah. Cups, Olympics that they'll be able to pass on that knowledge, pass on that experience. So I mean, there's so many reasons why I think this team can go on and win the tournament and experience is one of those. Yeah, we were actually um, talking to Jill Scott the other day and we were talking about just that, the, the balance of like new talent, fresh new talent and experienced players. I think it works really well for the squad. And put that in the mix with a manager who has won the European Championships, who has lifted the Netherlands as it was five years ago to another level, a level they never thought they could get to and went on to win the tournament. You bring that in and you see, we've seen the impact and the results and performances with the England team, but how it makes them feel, the squad, the team dynamic, seeing how much it's been about a squad. And sometimes that's a throwaway comment when you're going into a tournament. But for this team, they've proven that the squad, everybody comes on and is not a substitute, they're a game changer. Mm. And they've proven that with the results and the different goal scores that they've had over the year that Serena Viedman has been in charge. Now, you spoke about game changers. One game changer in the squad, Ellen White, England's greatest ever goal scorer. Now, you played against her a lot. How was, how was it facing her in training? Surely there was a, there was a, there was a little bit of beef there because you're thinking, what, what more can I do here? Well, the worst thing was when you play, we played together at England for a long time as well, as then you go and play against them the following weekend and they go smashing into you like they've never met you before. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was always the case. She's a, the ultimate competitor, the ultimate professional. No stone left unturned in preparing for a tournament. Um, and as you said, she's all-time leading goal scorer. She should go to proven goal scorer, golden boot in the last World Cup. And absolutely no doubting that if she's on that pitch, she'll get goals. Rachel, tell me what makes Ellen one of the best strikers in the world. She's developed her game. She's a better player now, I feel, than she was five, ten years ago. She's reined in the desire to want to chase the ball around everywhere and really focused on staying between the, the, the goalposts. And then the touch that she has in the penalty area, usually is deadly. In the World Cup, I remember she had something like 10 chances and scored nine goals or, you know, was hugely efficient. We know exactly what she can do and she brings it at the big moments. Nice. Now, 
who should we look out for? Who should we be looking out for on both sides of the uh, on both sides of the ball? Because it's it, it, there's some talent on show today. <sighs> I mean, you could name every single player from 1 to 23, genuinely. Um, you look at the goal scorers and how that's been spread across the squad. Um, Valesi Russo steps up, proven that as little experience as she has in an England shirt, nobody is um, nervous or, or, or the occasion overawes them. They get on that pitch and you can see the belief that Serena Wiegmann has implanted in every single one of those players. I'm excited to see Ella Toon. In fact, she's playing at Old Trafford, Manchester United fan. It must be the best feeling in the world for her. Then you've got Kira Walsh, again, Manchester girl, stepping out, not on you know the colour of uh, <laughs> the team that she's grown up supporting, but will rise to that occasion. Never seems flustered or flappable uh, in any sort of way, very composed. George Stanway, as I mentioned, She's been awesome in these last few warm-up games. And then Lauren Hemp's had the season of her life, goal scorer, provider, you know, getting past players and whipping that ball in. You see time and time again. Beth Mead um, has had, again, season of her life. All these players I'm talking about are, are really at the peak of their careers. And then you're bringing on players like Jill Scott, who's, you know, the number of caps she's got an experience. And even though she's not necessarily going to start the games in this tournament. She'll come on and contribute in a really impactful way. So it's really hard to pinpoint a player. And that works in England's favour because unlike a lot of teams, if they lose one certain key player, you can almost rule them out of the tournament. For England, I don't think they have a player like that who is indisposable. So basically the whole squad, <laughs> the, the whole squad's to watch. <laughs> and uh, we caught up with Mary Earps yesterday, England's number one. How impressed have you been with her goalkeeping? And I don't know if you've seen her TikTok dances, <laughs> but if you have, how impressed have you been with that? <laughs> I'll answer the first question. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's grown so much as a player. Uh, we were in a squad together and She's, she's taken herself to different countries, to different teams, to better herself uh, on and off the pitch. And she's now absolutely the best version of Mary Earps. And with that added confidence, again, that Serena Wiegmann has, has shown that she is the number one. She's had a very consistent season. And certainly for England, she has been phenomenal. Because it's really important as a goalkeeper, it's not just about making saves. It's about contributing as part of that back five being the first line of attack as well as the last line of defence. And she's looked very reassuring. And when, when a goalkeeper can bring that, that has a ripple effect across the team. So your back four brings them confidence, passes it onto the midfield. The distribution's excellent, works brilliantly with the game plan of wanting to play out the back. Uh, teams that we're going to play up against, like Austria tonight, I'm sure we'll try and set traps, we'll try and press high. But Mary's got the ability to decision make under pressure and she is absolutely the right choice for this tournament right here right now for England. Incredible. That seems to be like a really strong goalkeeping trio, Hannah Hampton, Eddie Roebuck uh, and of course Mary Epps. Like, how good is that to see? Absolutely. With Karen Bardsley being sort of the long-standing number one prior to this, then when she's had her injury problems, Ellie Roebuck steps up. And that's the nature of being a goalkeeper. You get your chance when a goalkeeper, a mainstay number one, is injured. And Ellie Roebuck took that opportunity as a young Manchester City goalkeeper starting for England. And then when Ellie Roebuck's been injured, Mary Earps has stepped in. It's under Serena Wiegmann, she's had consistent starts. As I've said, the confidence has grown and grown. And she's starting number one. And she's reflected herself on how she would never have you know, in recent history, would not have expected A, to be in the squad and B, to be that starting number one goalkeeper. But she's earned that chance. Those, the opportunity arrives, but you've got to go take it. And she's done that. She's proved to be consistent, commanding and makes big saves at big times. Nice. I love that. That feels like a lesson in life, really.
It's very inspirational. But talk to us a little bit about your journey, which is also inspirational as well, because when you first started playing football, it was at a boys' club in Burnley. <laughs> as is probably a lot of us uh, of my mature age, um, there weren't the opportunities that there were when, uh, the, you know, the current crop of Lionesses, when they started playing, straight to centres of excellence and girls teams and having the opportunity to be either playing boys teams or girls teams. But, you know, that's then uh, and this is now. And thankfully, the product of the investment and the resources that have been available to the current crop of Lionesses, we're seeing what a fully professional league, what all of that infrastructure has led to. And that is England knocking on the door to win a trophy. And that for me is the most exciting thing. Yes, we can feel the excitement. <laughs> how, how much has that changed? It seems like there's so many more, <laughs> come on England. It seems like there's so many more routes for women and young girls to get into football now than there maybe was when, when you started going on. 100%. There's, you know, over 2 million young girls and, and women playing football nowadays. And that, again, just wasn't the case. So there's opportunities at both grassroots level for girls to play, like in the Wildcat Hubs, just for fun, as well as the moving further up the pyramid and being able to place elite players in those um in those centres to be able to develop them further, as well as then the youth set up at England, which again, wasn't in place when I started. I went straight into the first team at England, um, age 16. Wow. I wasn't ready, but there was no other option. So uh, you take the opportunity that's presented with you, that you've earned, and it's exactly the same for the Lionesses nowadays, but there's just a better infrastructure for them. And uh, we spoke about uh, the goalkeepers union earlier as well. Now, how much has the goalkeepers training improved in the women's game? Like every aspect of women's football, it's, it's improved over the last 15, 20 years. You can't underestimate how, how getting that elite and specific training for goalkeepers is from a young age. You know, by the time I was 25, I might have accumulated the 30,000 30, hours practice, which is, equates to kind of mastery of a skill. These girls have done that by the time they're probably 15, 16. And so then it's fine tuning those basic skills, those rehearsed techniques, and being able to pick, put them into scenario based, getting more and more game time. And um, the fact that there's so many more teams at senior level, you know, these girls will have had over 100 games or more, um, well over 100 games. And I, I think the biggest thing is having experienced major tournament experience at international level through the youth age groups. That's invaluable. When you're going to a, a, when you're going to a stadium like Old Trafford tonight in front of 75,000, um, that is something that needs to be processed. Uh, if you do that for the first time, you can put you off. It will be really hard to kind of concentrate and not be overawed by the occasion. Um, but you know, these girls have been there and done it already. So they're so ready for it. But you're right, goalkeepers specifically, we've needed to improve the standard of it when I played. You know, I was the best at the time, but you compare the standard that I got to compared to the standard that you know, this current crop of international goalkeepers is that they're smashing it. And that's great for me to see. You're also part of a very select trio of people, Jordan Pickford, Gordon Banks and yourself to play in a major tournament final for England. Only three of you. How does that feel? And talk me through that experience in 2009. It was amazing because it was a historical moment. We never got to a final before and we've not got to a final since. So. I'm hoping that that is a momentary part of history and new history will be made, you know, on the 31st of July this year. But it was amazing because it was, a, again, another platform where more people watch women's football and that kind of momentum that has been gathered for women's football, that it was shown live on TV and we've never gone back from that. Since then, every tournament, every World Cup, 
the Olympics has been a new platform for more people to be able to watch it. And um, again, viewership, more people getting involved because of that participating is something, a legacy that all of us involved on that particular day are really, really proud to have been a part of. And you're also a part of another select group, an Olympian. So that was a uh, Team GB in, GB in London 2012. And you know, this tournament kicks off tonight at home. What does it feel like to be a part of an event that is in your home country? That was the biggest moment of my career. Being at Wembley in front of over 75,000 people, feeling that home crowd, everybody singing banners. It was an unbelievable and unparalleled experience. So for any of those girls who were, who were there in London 2012, Jill Scott, Ellen White, they'll be able to share those experiences with the girls because I think it'd be very, very similar. Huge packed stadiums, majority of people screaming and shouting, willing you to win. But this time they go in as arguably one of the favourites. At London 2012, that was a difference. Um, you know, we weren't. It's the first time we'd ever had a TGB team. Again, a moment in history, which I feel very, very proud of to, to call myself an Olympian. Um, but, you know, I, I want all of these things to be, you know, maybe remembered, but I want, I want these, I want this his, new history to be made. I feel like Serena Beedman is the missing piece of the puzzle to get the best out of this squad and to start making new history. I mean, you must be so proud of yourself, though, you know, to be a part of that generation that took women's football to where it is right here today, where we could be speaking with such confidence as well. I feel part, proud of the generation of players who made it happen. I don't think there's any one individual who made it happen. It was, a, it was definitely a collective. Uh, I feel really proud of the fact that I'm still part of football in a, the media capacity and I can shout about it and share my experiences and keep drumming up excitement and uh, being able to, you know, I, I feel part of it. I'm still a lioness. Yeah. And, and, and that makes me feel really proud, you know, going into my daughter's school and talking about my experiences and what it means and the fact that girls can do anything and now you can grow up and want to be and can be a professional footballer, be a girl or a boy. Everyone from my generation of football was a part of where we are now. Incredible. Now, finally, I won't keep you too long. Can we get a score prediction for today? Well, England have never lost against Austria and the current form that they're in, I'm going to have to go away with a clean sheet. I'm back in my goalkeeper union. OK. And we're going to go with a 2-0 solid start to the tournament win for England. 2-0, ah. that's what I like. A that's actually our first score prediction here on Lionesses Live, connected by EE. So I'm so glad you're the one that provided us with that. So we are going to let you go in a minute. You're going to head off to Old Trafford for tonight's match. Who are you going with? I'm going with my daughter, Zara, my little boy, who's four, Freddie. Going with my mother-in-law, Babs. And I'm going with my friend, Lauren, and her daughter, Connie. My mum, my dad, yes. two other friends from France. Yes, I love oh, yeah. this. It's, the it's whole squad Basically out. the whole of Old Trafford. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Most so you lot, you lot got all the tickets then, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why it's sold out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for talking Can't to wait. us. Really appreciate it. Enjoy the game. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, now we are just a few hours away from the kickoff at Old Trafford. We are very, very excited. And we've got Molly and Rosie Committer coming up on the show very, very soon. But before we get to that, let's read out some more messages of support. Right, we got Ben1999, who has said, we love you, Joella and Josh. What? Come on, then. Yes. Don't make me cry, because I will. Yeah, it's all about Don't the lionesses. Do that. Forget us. It's about the lionesses, right? Emotional, you know. <laughs> I was crying in the first show. That's true, you were. If, if you missed it, a lot of tears it, in the back. first show, I can't lie. Uh, Michael Webb, my brother-in-law's 50th today. He's at Old Trafford. Big win for his birthday, please. I mean, I can't promise you anything, but we never lost against Austria, so you might be in for a great birthday surprise. 
That's right. Um, and Tao Kirby has said, just checked into our hotel. Absolutely buzzing for kickoff. Good luck, gals. Incredible. I think uh, the, the excitement the is building. The nation's isn't it? behind the team. Absolutely. That's what it feels like. And do you know right? who else is behind the team? Molly and Rosie. Come here. We're going to speak to them. But before we do that, let's take a look at them in action at the Lionesses squad reveal earlier this summer. David Beckham, live from Wembley. Well, today's the day. I'm here for the announcement for the England squad for the Euros. I'm really excited. From bedroom it's dreams to AstroTurf to Sunday league to stadium, England raised the lioness in every corner of the country. Our family, our time, our year, breaking down barriers like never before. These are more than teammates, more than friends. Sisters got history because the three lions were born from a lioness. Peter, what are you doing? Come on, you need to be back out there. Come on. Right, Molly, Rosie, it's going to be incredible to speak to them. Now, where are they? Where are they? We're getting there. There you are. There you are. We've been waiting patiently. We thought you might not be around. You see, we might have thought you've been uh, abducted by some of the England fans at Old Trafford. Is that where you are, right? <laughs> Yeah, we've just uh, finished surfing the crowd, to be fair. <laughs> ah, and that's exactly how, how you, you two do as well. I already know that. <laughs> how excited are you to be going to the game tonight? Now, listen, where we are right now, it's not too bad, but I can't lie, I'm jealous. Oh, yeah, guys, honestly, even the train journey down here, it's been amazing. The atmosphere is building. Like, look at this. The fan park. Wow. It's getting well on yeah, its way. Uh, so it's all very, very exciting here at Old Trafford. <laughs> Right. Now, talk to me. You were part of the, uh, the squad announcement. I saw you doing the kick-ups. The tech was on fire. Now, speak to me. How good was it to be part of something so big and something like that? Do you know what? I think for us growing up within women's football, playing the game since the age of, of 10, you know, living through this transition has been crazy. So I think being a part of that squad announcement was like a really surreal moment. And we had a moment, didn't we? I remember going to Rose like, just take it in. You know, sometimes when things happen, you just got to yeah, have a minute yeah. and take it in. And the touch weren't bad either. So it was <laughs> <laughs> no pressure at all, was it? Uh, now, we've asked Rachel this as well, but I want to hear from you two. Who are the players that we need to watch? Who are you most excited to see? Yeah, do you know what? I'm most excited to see Leah Williamson tonight. Yeah, you know, the girl is a natural born leader and I'm so excited to see her wear that armband tonight. She thoroughly deserves it. And uh, what a moment for her and her family, you know? Talk me through the atmosphere over there because I'm, I'm seeing hundreds of people walking behind you. you. You showed us a little bit, but what's it like? What's the buzz like? Hey, we've got scarves being sold. We've got the fan part going off. Honestly, like when you when you say like it feels like a moment, that's the only way I can, the only words I can use to describe it. It's a moment in history for women's football in this country, and you can feel it. You can oh. see little boys walking around with the women's names on the back of their shirts, and moments like that. You know, we're getting goosebumps walking around here. Do you know that what we said though? True. You know, you know what we said, and we always say it, right? There's like young young girls and boys walking around uh, with their England shirts on, and for them, it'll be their first experience of a football game. Like their yeah. first experience in a women's football game. Like that's that's history. That's amazing. That is so, so special. And actually, that's what I was going to ask you. Are there loads of England shirts? You've just answered that question. But what names are we seeing on the back of these shirts? All right, let me just check my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, I'll be honest with you. You're seeing what we got there. We got Tooney over there. We got Toon. We got um, Williamson. Looking about as well. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah. All of the big guns. <laughs> All the big guns, Love exactly. It. They're getting represented now. Football-wise, how much has Serena Weidman changed this this team and, and given this team, I guess, the hope that they could really go that one step further and win the tournament? Well, I think you know, players in that dressing room. When when a manager has been there and done it, got the t-shirt to prove it. I think that gives you confidence, right? To know that actually, nah, she's been in this experience before. She's actually brought it home back in 2017. So I think, what first of all, it gives her confidence and all the players' confidence. But secondly, the environment she's created, you can tell that these girls are absolutely believing that they can bring it home. And we all believe they can bring it home. And you feel it from everyone. So for me, I think she is, as Rachel said earlier, pretty much like that. She's been that missing piece. She is that missing piece to the puzzle. So, yeah, so grateful to have her with this England squad. All right. And uh, again, 
this is this seems like a little bit of a silly question actually especially considering what you've just said but what are your hopes what are your hopes for England in this tournament <laughs> are we coming back with the w <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> seriously, seriously, like, no, but genuinely, like, you know, obviously we're all going to be supporting England, but you genuinely feel like we have got a huge chance here. Um, so just excited to see it all play out. You know, the players in our squad, we see them smash it week in, week out in the WSL. Mm. So when you put them players like that all together, magic happens, right? No doubt about it. Let's hope there'll be some magic today as well at Old Trafford. Now, can we get a score prediction from you both? Oh, oh, don't mind, Josh. What do you? I mean, listen, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I think two, three, nil. I think it's going to be a drubbing, to be honest with you. But that's just me. Yeah, I know, I know. What, what are we saying? I'm going, I'm going four. I'm going. Four. Oh. All right, yeah, it's gone. Right, we're going, we're going. I just needed the little nod. We're going four nil, England. Ooh, be dominant. The four dog. And, yeah. Listen, <laughs> listen. If they're gonna, if they're gonna set the tone, they need to set it, set the standard high, and they'll do it. All right. Well, we have that belief. Thank you so much, Rosie and Molly. So much love to you guys, as always. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Always Thanks good to speak to you, us. girls. Yeah. Thanks Bye. for joining us. Live. See you. Lovely Thank to see you. you. See you later. Take care. Bye. Oh, it's getting, it's getting, I'm getting a bit gassed. My heart has warmed. This is so beautiful. Like, tonight's the night, Josh. Tonight's the night. Sold out. Old Trafford. Yes. First game of the tournament. Of the home tournament. The home you tournament. You couldn't write it. You yes. couldn't write it, Josh. All right, let's get into some more messages of support that you have been sending in. And keep, keep them coming, please. And again, don't forget to hashtag Lioness is live. So let's get into it. Emily Peacock has said... Let's go! At Lioness. Well, that, listen, you can't forget the hashtags. There's, listen, there's, there's the big stars in their eyes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And there's the trophy. trophy. Yeah, yeah, true. It's a beautiful thing. You know, that yeah, adds a little bit point. of flavour to no, the tweet. No, no, they need to know all the To details. the tweet, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's what, what was Dan Lewis saying? Dan Lewis said, sending you all the luck and love in the world. You guys have got this. Keep inspiring us all. I love it. We got Jay Musgrove who said, best of luck to our girls tonight and throughout the Euros. Now go smash it. Wow, see, look, that's, that's all we need to hear. Now, the elusive ginger. <laughs> very good, good Twitter name, by the way. Uh, hashtag like this is live. Can't wait for kickoff tonight. Rooting for you, ladies. Aren't we all? Yes, Aren't we, we are all? indeed. This is very, very exciting times. And we've come to just about the end of our show, Josh. It's the saddest part of my day, you know. I, I believe that it is. I, I can see. Are you going to cry? I thought there I was a crier in this situation. There could be some tears. There could be. <laughs> Don't zoom in. You're fake cry. <laughs> I won't see you on any films or TV shows soon, will I? <laughs> no, nah, probably not. I'll stick to talking about football. <laughs> All right, you amped up for the match though, yeah? I am absolutely buzzing. I cannot wait. And that's it for me today. That's it. Join me tomorrow uh, at the later time of 8 p.m. as the Lionesses arrive here at the Team Hotel in London for the very first time. And I will be catching up with one of the girls from tonight's match. Ooh. Josh, I'm going to catch up with you in a few days, mate. Yeah, listen, it'll be a few days. But I'm absolutely buzzing to be back and I'll be watching the game tonight, don't you worry. That's right. And Abby McCarthy will be joining me again tomorrow too. So see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. But for now, we're going to leave you with this amazing short film that, again, just warms my heart and it's going to get you as hyped up as we are. It's an exciting time for the Lionesses going into such a big campaign in the Euros this summer. Let's talk about family. This family. The sense of belonging. The source of pride. Every time we pull on the shirt, our bond is unspoken. <laughs> years in the making we've grafted together inspired each other from muddy pitches right up to pros through thick and thin highs and lows 
we wear the three lions with pride, with privilege, with responsibility. Now we forge a new England, standing shoulder to shoulder on our home turf. Awesome Ellen White, the greatest ever goal scorer. This year means more to you, to us, to all of us, our family. It's time to unite, time to be fearless, time to believe. This is our time. 